Alright guys, so today we're just going to do a bit of a fun one. Nothing serious here, just playing around with Maya, just sort of looking at his capabilities. We're going to um, be emitting some end particles from a mocap uh, model that's sort of resident within Maya, and uh, we're just going to play around with some effects. So, without further ado, let's get on with it. So, let's go to Window, General Editor's Visor. Uh, when you open this, you'll probably be on the Paint Effects tab, and you want to scroll along until you get to the mocap examples. And you can see there's quite a few different ones in here. You might be familiar with them, you might not. Um, I'm just going to grab the Run one. So, if we middle mouse click that and drag that into the scene, that's going to load directly into World Space. And you can see the first thing that appears. Uh, in the scene is a reference point for the mocap and that should be sort of sitting in on the X plane and we can see it's rather large at the moment so I'm going to scale that down to about 0.1 so it's just a bit easier to play with that's fine and I'm going to just increase my timeline to about 500 cool so let's hit 5 texture mode let's uh, rewind and play and see what this dude does cool now, just to sort of give you an example of what we're going to be doing today, um, I've got a couple of examples on here on my uh, YouTube channel, just showing some different things with uh, mocap, and then you know some particle emission and the kinds of stuff that you can do. You can imagine if you spent a lot more time with this sort of thing, especially that kind of thing, you could start to create some effects that you see in film and whatnot. Cool, so let's rewind to the beginning and let's uh, get the outliner open. We want to select the skin of the shape um, and let's just open up the end dynamics menu and we go to end particles, create end particles and we can see that we've got balls selected. Uh, I think I'll go with balls today and <laughs> we'll emit from the object and I'm going to make sure the surface is selected and I'm going to sort of put my rate up to about 250 hit apply close that and if we play we'll see that we'll get some emission of end particles from the skin now because this is um, my N dynamics we've uh, had a nucleus node created automatically when we created that particle so that means that we could also go in now underneath the nucleus system and create a floor so I'm just gonna simple poly plane here uh, I'm just gonna make sure that that's lining up with this guy's feet, yeah perfect and I'm going to go to end mesh create a passive collider so now when the particles fall they're gonna fall to the floor. Cool. Now what I want to do is I want to stop the particles from falling to the floor. So the simple way that I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the outliner. <clears throat> I'm going to select the nucleus node. I'm going to control A to open up the attribute editor. And I'm going to turn the gravity down. And so now if we rewind we can see that we've got these trowel of particles. So what we can do now is if we go into the show menu we can switch off polygons. Actually I'm going to keep polygons on because of something I'm going to do in a little while. Um, I'm going to do it this way. So open up the outliner. I'm going to grab the skin. I'm going to stick that on a display layer. Switch that off. I'm going to do the same with the joints. Let's stick that on the display layer. Switch that off also. So now we're just dealing with the particles. So I've hit rewind. You see those particles updating along there. So I'm going to crank these particles up a little bit. Control A, get into the attribute editor. And we're going to go into the emitter. Let's take this up to about 500. So I just want a few more particles my simulation okay great so the fun bit now um, and I've done this in other tutorials but we're going to leave the particles selected let's just check that I've got the particles selected yeah and I'm going to go into modify convert end particles to polygons 
can rewind. And we can see it's not playing so well because of uh, you know it's computationally heavy. So we're going to do a quick play blast and see where we're at with that. So we'll just go window, play blast options, and we'll just for now we'll just do a hundred and apply that. So we're going to tweak some uh, blobbiness and threshold attributes of this. Just hit escape because I'm done looking at that. It just gave me a good pointer towards what's going on. Okay, so with this selected, we'll go into the particle shape and we're going to scroll down to the mesh output mesh values in the attribute editor of the particle. Uh, here we can tweak with the threshold, and that's just going to, you know. Let's rewind this and just play this slightly. The threshold's gonna give us sort of less interaction between the particles and the mesh and the space between them. I'm gonna keep that down to zero so we've just got some kind of full interaction between the mesh and the particles. You can turn up the blobbiness scale or down, and we can mess with the triangle size. A bit of motion streak, a bit more scale. There we go. What we should note is because this is a mesh, we can actually hit free to subdivide it on the on the keyboard. And now, if we do a little play blast, we've got something a bit cooler. Needs refining. So let's just stop that and just see what we've got going on. So yeah, I mean this could potentially be some kind of dark black oily evil looking liquid, or we could create some water um, and have it refract in a background. Um, obviously, when we composite that, we could also use that as a kind of a heat map behind a character. Uh, there's all sorts of possibilities we could do with this. So that's just you know one way we can create some kind of fun effects very very quickly with Myers N particle system. Cool. So, you can save that off, play around with that for a bit. Uh, let's just delete the surface and go back into the end particle. And we want to be in the particle shape node. Just trying to remember where this would be. Because we want to switch back to the particles again. remember where this was so bear with me for a second guys I'm just gonna pause this okay so what we had to do is just scroll down so I just needed to reference back I'm not a Jedi you know you know that everyone needs to remember these things um, so back to the attribute area of the particle you can see the transform node still there I want to go into the particle shape node and if we go to object display you want to switch off intermediate object so that's how you get back to your object after uh, doing a convert to mesh option. So now we're back to that again. We've got our particles. We can play around with some effects in here. Um, obviously we can add some drag. So the particles just kind of float in the air a bit more rather than falling down. We've got um, wind options. And we can obviously go and create a polygon cube. Very much like I did with my other video on YouTube. And we just go to window outliner. And we pick the cube, get the particle, particles instance. So now we can see all of our cubes. 
I could just turn off um, end particles from here and now we can just see the cubes which is kind of cool if you wanted to add um, if you wanted to make those smaller you can just scale down the source cube if you want to rotate it just rotate it and we can also add some dynamic fields to this like turbulence so if I select the particle and we go to fields turbulence that's going to create turbulence and we can parent that, those turbulence to say the skin so we select the turbulence and set the select the skin node in the outliner hit P for parent rewind turn the magnitude up and let's do a little play blast to see if that is working. We can see it's working there. It's not. Um, it's not exactly powerful. So I could perhaps get that mag magnitude up a bit more. To get to about 500, and it's probably not working so well actually because we've got the damp still sitting on the particle. And again, if we turn that damp down that's going to start to affect the turbulence even more so let's just grab the particle get, sorry not damp, drag and we turn the drag down rewind and play, you can see that turbulence already just affecting everything a little bit more so that's particles that's instant cubes should I say now let's try something completely different, let's just get rid of the particles, get rid of the nucleus keep the rigid I suppose and we want to show our model again so we just go back to the display layers and switch on the skin so this time oh, we've still got our turbulence in there let's get rid of that, let's get rid of the instancer and the turbulence will be sitting within there and there's the better Okay, cool. So we're back to this guy again. What else could we do? Um, I don't know. Let's play around with some N hair. Um, the hair is going to be dependent on the UV map. So let's have a look at the UV map and the UV texture editor. Mm, thanks for the desk. That's nice. <laughs> Lovely. Okay. So let's just quickly do an automatic map on this. Um, you'd do something a little bit more serious. Usually so let's go into the polygons menu, create UVs, and I'm just going to do a quick automatic map okay so let's go back to end dynamics menu and I'm going to go to end here, I'm going to go paint follicles there we go so let's just start painting some follicles over our dude making a bit of a hairy mess obviously with a better UV layout you will get better control over how many follicles you can paint in certain areas looking nice so if we have a look at the outliner now we can see that again because we're using the in dynamics we've created um, automatically created a, a nucleus so if we just uh, control A and have a look at the nucleus yeah we've got some gravity so when we hit play all this hair should drop and follow the animation hey amazing so something else kind of fun again we could switch off the layer and the hair still stay um, bit of a weird look don't quite know what you'd use that for but you know Courses for courses. Um, what we can do is, if the I'm going to show you this, if you want to make the hair longer, it's a bit of a weird one. I don't quite know why Autodesk have done this, but you can go into the um, different attributes for the hair, and you can change things like uh, the width scale, and the you know, and the twist, and the curliness. Um, but there's actually nowhere in here to change the length. 
which kind of blows my mind a little, a little bit. I'm sure there's a reason for it. You have to use a scowl tool. So with the hair selected, we'll go into N hair and we'll click on the scowl tool. It's a bit of a weird tool. You don't have to middle mouse click. You can just literally left click in the window uh, and drag to the right or the left to make the hair smaller or larger. It's bizarre, I know, but you know, I'm not going to question it. Just gets the job done. So, longer hair. Play that. Hey, total madness. Cool, so obviously this is paint effects hair. And this hair has come with a whole bunch of paint effects attributes. You can actually change the type of paint effects um, hair that's on there. So if you go to window, generate it as visor. I haven't, I haven't tried this, so let's just bear with me. Um, it's a bit hit and miss what looks any good in here actually but we could get some kind of plant man going on I guess um, plants mesh trees it's going to be a bit heavy where's the grass grass so let's select some ornamental glass grass on that maybe we go a sign paint effects brush to hair like that so we've got some grass now so we now have a grass man running around that's fun um, so Again, we can scale this up using the scale tool. Well, that's actually going to scale the hair itself. Okay, uh, let me switch that off. So, we can go to the grass. There's a global scale for the grass. Scale that up to bigger grass. And there's all sorts of options in there, I'm not going to go into that, I'll be there all day, so... Yeah, cool. Very different. Probably going to have to do a bit of a play blast on this to have a look what's going on. There's an awful lot of paint effects there. I'll just pause it while it's doing that. Okay, so that's done now. Um, it didn't take too long actually, but it's just kind of laborious for you guys to sit for it. <clears throat> so there you go, I'm your guy if you ever want to create a motion captured uh, man made of grass that runs yeah because you're always going to need that in your job well there you go bit of fun today um, sort of nearly 20 minutes there I could have split that into a couple of tutorials there's a load of things we can do with this this endless I suggest you just play I play all day long sometimes uh, with all the attributes and the, and the different effects and when a client wants something you know you can offer something new up um, just show them some weird wacky crazy stuff often they'll love it there you go nice one guys cheers thanks very much for listening see you later